and so to celebrate the America's Cup I've decided to build a model of that ship this one is from a kit and this one is being scratch built I had purchased this kit a few years ago a um, kit of the America made uh, um, in Spain by Constructo and had it up in the top of my cupboard and then when I took it out so I had a good friend of mine who was harassing me to give him to make a model or give him one of my models so I thought I would give him this one to my horror um, I found that a number of the wooden parts had been attacked by a powder post beetle and so I decided that the solution to this would be to um, take some of my stock that I had um, accumulated and make parts to replace the woodworm eaten uh, pieces of the kit. I felt the written instruction could have been much more detailed. Um, certainly the pictures are quite adequate, um, but in the attempt to translate this to as many people as possible, um, I, I felt that the written word should have been gone into in much more detail. And so, as a result, that's why I decided to actually do this video. The first thing we're going to do is just take these various parts out. These have all been cut with an exacto knife. And so they come out fairly easy. I'm just being very careful not to break the ones that have been damaged. So these are not too bad. Now we're just going to assemble them using this stand, not this stand that's um, that's given to us in the kit. The uh, only two frames you need to be careful of um, is frame seven and five. Um, it's a fairly close in size, but the profile um, is quite different um, at the bottom. We are going to be using some juniper um, from my stockpile. This is this was put down May last year, so it should be fairly dry. We're taking them down to from a quarter inch to 0 0.083 of an inch, but we're going to do the bulk of it first on the um, on the table saw and then take it down on the thickness planer. So we're now taking it down um, to meet the model specs. Now that that's all dimensioned, we'll put the original part, in this case it's the spine, onto the juniper, clamp it so it doesn't move and then simply trace out the lines and then we'll cut that on the scroll saw.
all complete and cut out literally on two pieces. So we have a spare and then we have some flats, thinner stock. I've um, cut all the pieces out, so I'm not going to take you through that using the band saw, the table saw, and the scroll saw. Um, and the result of that is that we are all done and ready to go. These are all the pieces that have been cut out on the scroll saw. And this is the false keel. And so we can assemble this one in much the same way as we did the other one. There's another little bag of parts um, that you need um, to put the various supports on the frame. And again, we were able to make those. So again, I'm not going to go through in any detail, but they were relatively easy to make. I've made them all out of hardwood. Um, so it would be a little bit more challenging to shape, particularly the stone, but other than that it's just going to be, I think, simply pretty good. Parts 13, 14, 15 and 16, which have a little slope to them, don't follow the slope of the model exactly. Um, you're going to sand that down so it really doesn't matter. Just make sure that the um, that it doesn't cover the slot for the false um, ribs um, or frames um, so that they can fit in very easily. The reinforcement to the stern, 17 and 18, were clipped on the same way, full length, and then trimmed later on. The strip glued to number six. Um, I put I use CA to hold it in place because it bends, and of course you have to make sure you get it dimensionally correct. I also did not pin any of the parts in this model. I thought that was overkill, and I felt that the glue would be more than adequate to hold everything in place. The wood that was most affected by the power post beetle was in fact these false decks and we're going to use some base wood that I have um, to cut these out and replace the original deck from the kit.
This is a repair deck. Um, we had to use quite a bit of epoxy with micro balloons. Um, it had become very unstable as we um, started putting it together. So it's now ready to start taking the, the planking. Just giving you a side view. The plan calls for running a center line right down the center of the of the boat and then planking on both sides of that and um, yet if you look at the actual plank layout on the plan you will see that there is a center plank um, so I have already run the, the center line down put the first two planks on on the second model, I am going to change that and just put it on a center plank because that would be, in fact, the correct way um, to do it. Now we're going to cut the planks, and I've reduced the size of the blade. I used a much thinner blade on the Jim Barnes, and I had talked in previous uh, videos about making a sliding table for the Jim Barnes, so, and this is it. To um, put the sliding table, you have to remove the fence. There are two screws. Um, you need a 964th, one here and one here, and that simply comes right off. You put that aside, and then the sliding table fits on top. And that's the method. And then we have a simple system. For establishing the length of the cut, we have a little clamp here, and that means that every single plank that we cut will be exactly the same. This little block which I added afterwards is to, uh, it's a safeguard so that when we're pushing the sliding table and the saw blade goes through here, it doesn't come out this end and cut our fingers. So here we go. This is going to be exactly the same. The process of sticking the planks down is really straightforward. You need maybe four or five hours to plank the entire model. Um, I tend to use an applicator and um, as you've seen many of my videos, um, have a large sheet of glass which I can put glue on and it's very easy to clean up once the glue dries. Um, sometimes there's a fine adjustment that needs to be made. I try to use a square each time I'm going to make a cut. And then instead of going back to the Jim Bond saw, I'll actually use a scissors as this gives me a nice clean cut that doesn't require sanding. Of course, you need to remember that each time you make a cut, you need to take the pencil and go back and highlight the joint. Um, the joint is supposed to um, give you a feel for caulking that was actually used between the boards and that caulking tends to get dark over time. So the the pencil really does this um, quite quite well. As you get close to the um, sides, you'll find that the pre-cut boards don't fit, and so you'll go back to some of the longer uncut um, bulk planks, and I use the scissors to do this. Um, you do need to make sure that there's glue on the edge, on the inside edge of the plank, um, because unlike the other planks, it'll only be sticking on one side. To accent the lines between the boards, we actually use a pencil on the edge 
and the simplest way I found to do this is having cut all the boards line them up and simply take a pencil and color the edges all together um, this really is the easiest way so what would normally take about an hour if you're doing these individually gets done quite quickly and then I do the other side um, that way I don't have to think about if it has a, a right side or a wrong side all sides are good and I do the same thing at the top um, I just run a piece of sandpaper over the top and and quite interestingly we found one so short so this job will continue um, lots of patience is required um, and there really are only two lines on each part of the false front deck and back deck which keep the stagger of the boards going forward um, and the half lengths um, that you I tend to cut each one uniquely in terms of establishing these lines the cross lines you need to make sure that they are square to the center line um, and if they're off at all you're going to have uh, a creeping forward or backward joint line which will become very visible and we'll just just giving you a quick rundown of what it looks like in your rough front section is all done the first sanding is complete and most of the problems with the woodworm seems to have disappeared with the added strength that the planking gives to the boat. This is a picture of the stern of the two ships, the kit on the left and the scratch belt on the right. This brings us to the end of part one and we hope you found it very useful.